Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Talking Female Health with me, Amy Connor, and my lovely co-host and friend, Lisa Yara. Um, we have decided to talk about loving our bodies where they're at, where they are at, if I can get my words out today, because we just feel that it's something that needs to be talked about especially at this time of year we are recording this in August the sun is shining and more pieces of our flesh are going on display as the weather gets hotter and there can occasionally be around this time of year and and the increase in temperature and holidays and all of the good things a little bit of pressure on ourselves to look or feel a certain way about our bodies and we just thought it'd be a really interesting conversation to have just around we were joking a little bit at the beginning about talking about how to get a swimsuit body and we said it would be the shortest episode ever because we would just say get your body and put a swimsuit on and you are ready to go but we we wanted to dive a little bit deeper into this because I know that it is something that everybody feels on some level. Like no one is alone in not feeling great about their body at times. Um, So we just want you to open up discussion around this. Thank you, Amy, for opening it. Uh, I certainly have my own history, having been anorexic for most of my life. Uh, Not being taught how to care for, tend to my body in a healthy way, other in a perfunctorily, well, brush your hair, Mm -hmm. clip your fingernails, make sure you eat enough, don't eat too much. (laughs) Oh, this is the newest diet uh and and all of that um and like basically most of us have been taught out of a relationship with our body like we all had and we discussed that in our last episode children are so curious about their bodies yes we love understanding our bodies looking at like laughing at our bodies and what funny noises they can make and all Mm -hmm. these things And at some point, this becomes apparently inappropriate for an adult person. Yeah. Uh, And then we start hiding the sounds, the smells, the view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, absolutely. And I think that that piece is really important as well, because I have a really close relationship with my nieces and nephews and they see me undressed. And, you know, we go to the toilet in the same room and everything. And I have recently put a little bit of weight on. And a few days ago, my nephew said to me, Auntie Amy, your tummy's getting really big. So I sat on the toilet and he was like, yeah, your tummy's... They are so lovingly honest. Your tummy's getting really big. (laughs) And my immediate response was, yes, but that's okay because it's still beautiful, it's still amazing, it's still letting me do everything that I'd like to do, it still digests my food, like, still helps me, it can still move around, like, it's it's beautiful, like, I think my tummy's really beautiful, and he was like, yeah, it's really beautiful, like, it it was just, like, I think sometimes the response that we give to children Mm -hmm. when they're being curious, because I have put weight on, my stomach has got bigger, so he's just stating a, a, a clear obvious observation for him and I feel that the way we respond to that because sometimes you know you can have the oh you don't say that it's rude or and then automatically that that program is oh mm-hmm. we can't talk about that or you know mm-hmm. we don't talk about fat people or what whatever it is that, that, that they are um exploring but we were just having just having a laugh with Lisa before we um before we hit record because I have put weight on and I know that this is because I've gone through a few difficult months 
and I have exercised less and eaten more and I have used food for comfort but the funny thing about my stomach is that I have a a vertical scar so when I put weight on it looks like a bum at the front so we were like I was which I find hilarious um because this is thank my you humor. so much for sharing this openly I love it I love you <laughs> and, and this is this is one of the things that I shared with my nephew I was like oh look because it, it does find my stomach fascinating anyway because it's got scarring on it so mm-hmm. it's it's interesting for him but like I could have a laugh at him and say oh look it does look a little bit like a bum and and I just think it's it's funny but I know that previously I would have had a lot of resentment towards my stomach for being bigger she's taking up more space clothes are a little bit tighter things don't look as good as they previously did like clothing outfits whatever and it really struck me a few days ago when I was going through this how much I didn't care because I know that what my body really needs right now is love Mm. and care and attention and for me I feel that when that weight increased around my middle it's a message from my body of hey maybe things aren't going great like maybe we've got a bit off balance here and I'm trying to support you but you might need to change a few things Amy because things might be moving in the wrong direction and from that place I felt right okay let's see what I can do like let's get back to that connection with my stomach with my body with exercise movement all of the things and I know that things are moving in the right direction and I was actually talking to my husband about this and I was saying you know previously I would have felt really ashamed I maybe would have worn bigger clothes would have made an excuse you know like felt like I had to excuse myself for being a bit bigger than I normally am because I am I will just say as well that I am I count myself as fortunate because I've never really carried a lot of weight. I am somebody that will get to a certain size and then I can lose it relatively quickly. But the narrative that I did give myself was, you're postmenopause now, Amy, it might be harder mm. and things might need, to, you know, it might, it might not work the way that it did before. Mm. And it's like, but that's okay. It'll take as long as it needs to take. And I am Mm -hmm. still going to go out this summer and put my shorts on and let the sun hit my skin. And, you know, I'm going to do all of the things. I'm going to, and I I know I've talked about this before. Um, I have water fights with my nieces and nephews. I'm in my swimming costume. They don't care. Like, they genuinely do not care that I'm carrying a bit more weight. They just want to have fun. And Mm -hmm. that is what life should be about. Loving your body, having fun in your body, and really feeling this connection of it's okay. I'm not going to literally carry you around like an extra burden, weighted burden of resentment and regret of all Mm. the things that have gone you know like all of the things that I potentially did to build up to this that is not how to approach it and I'm sharing this because I have heard so many women or should I say too many women worrying about what they look like this summer Mm. I had a mother every summer summer yeah right? yeah like every the same every topic summer. all over again yeah I have a mother bless her who is in her 60s now and it's only in the last few years that she's had the confidence to wear shorts because mm. she's got very veins. and I have said to her throughout my life no one's looking at you very like absolutely no one 
is going to be looking at your varicose veins like it and if they are like that's their problem like you know (laughs) and I, I remember like the times that we would go on holiday abroad and she would worry about being in a swimsuit and I used to think why like why are you worried and you know this wasn't the weight issue it was the my legs look different to other people's issues yeah and but everybody's legs look different every Mm -hmm. everybody is different to every other body and whether I get my stomach to a washboard (laughs) like the washboard stomach or it stays the way it is it's still going to have all the scarring visible on it like it's I can't change that it's still going to be different to everybody else's and that's okay like it will still hopefully do all the digestive processes absolutely (laughs) absolutely and I I just think that when we talked in the previous episode about creating that space for yourself like just space to feel safe and good I genuinely feel that the attitude that I have now towards weight gain or towards my body whatever is happening to it like I keep getting gray hairs love it I'm excited about it it's just creating so much more space and so much more joy for my life you know, I so see. I want to warmly recommend our last episode to everyone because it was literally about breathing, expanding your ribcage, expanding yes. your lungs, taking in this full deep belly diaphragmatic breath, resting in yourself and in your body. And through this, the love can come. Like mm. loving your body. We've been raised to be at war with our bodies yes. from very little on. Women and people socialized as women, especially. Yeah. So we can't expect to go to love. That's like my, my favorite example is you can't expect be- for a war between nations to cease and there to, for there to be love in a day. Yeah. That's impossible. There needs to be a space or like a time of cease fire first. Yeah. And then of reconnecting and, and talking to each other. And learning to understand the other's perspective, developing respect for the other. And then maybe love, maybe not. But like this nervous system space of, but I feel safe in the moment. I feel safe in my body and my brain is not running crazy. Yeah. That's a very good place to start. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a hard place to get to as well, because as you said, there is so much conditioning around, you know, I think there's a, there's a saying somewhere, a meme, I don't know if it's a quote or a meme or whatever, but it says something along the lines of, if every woman in the world woke up tomorrow accepting their bodies and loving them, billions of pounds worth of industry would collapse Mm -hmm. Uh, because it is literally a multi-billion pound industry for women not to be happy with how they look so it is hard to get to that place because there's so much conditioning to overcome but you can start with like the smallest step and even if you don't believe it even if you, you know, like I, I've said, I'm just loving my stomach. It's really hard to do because if I had the choice, I wish it was a bit smaller right now. Like, you know, like, but it's, it's hard to ac- come to that place of acceptance and to start changing that narrative with yourself. But once you start to do it, it creates so much more space and so much more I feel and I feel a little bit uncomfortable talking about weight because I don't want anyone to feel that I'm judging anybody for for having you know more weight than somebody else but my personal experience is as soon as I started to accept or even acknowledge the fact that I'd put this weight on 
and connecting with my body and saying, okay, this is okay. You know, let's, what do you need? Like, Mm -hmm. what do we need to get through this? Then slowly, the right choices started to form for me. Like previously, when I was in this emotional turmoil that I was going through and I was literally numbing myself with chocolate and whatever else like felt felt like it needed numbing. When I actually spoke to my body, I was like, okay, I can see. This is a message. What do you need? Like, how can how can I help you? How can we how can we work together? Then almost overnight, the craving for the chocolate just went because I feel like I'd made this connection with myself and my body was like oh she's back in the room like she's back with us she's she's here she's present and we can start to work together to to move this forward and I know I'm talking about my stomach here and, and the size of my stomach but what I'm really talking about is my whole being like I just that. wanted to say this I mean yeah emotional eating and these things and and they it's always because our nervous system is activated in some way shape or yes. form and we try yeah. to soothe ourselves that's yeah. why we then I don't even want to say overeat but like eat in yeah. a way that doesn't feel good inside yeah. of us absolutely um, and, and, and that is okay that happens if that helps you cope with a certain situation for a time that's fine yeah yeah and it's it you know it it, and it's it's acknowledging that and being kind to yourself for those choices as well like Mm -hmm. to know that that was okay for that temporary period to give me what the support the support that I needed and I wanted to give a little reframe for when you say like tell yourself even though you don't believe it yet yes and no i want to say find the thought that is believable to you yes yeah (laughs) maybe i love my stomach is like no no i don't (laughs) like this immediate reaction then can it be it is okay that my stomach is the way it is right now Does that feel relaxing? Okay, then go with that thought and tell yourself that thing over and over and over again. And then at some point, try the I love my stomach again and see if there's a different charge. So always find the thought that at least is believable to you. You don't have to believe it yet, but find one where your system doesn't immediately rebel. I love that you phrased it like that because that's that's gold. Yeah. And one, one of the things that really works for me is showing up for myself in the mirror mm-hmm. and I've I've deliberately got we've got a, a what you call we call them a full length mirror and it's lent against the floor so I can sit on the floor and see the the, the, the whole of my top half in the, in the mirror and I did this intentionally because previously my relationship with my vulva and my vagina has been very bad. So part of supporting myself in creating that relationship was literally seeing it mm-hmm. in the mirror. Because we all know if we haven't got a mirror, we're not seeing it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it was literally every day I sit. It's where I go to dry my hair. Like I sit in front of the mirror and just doing that every day has really helped to create a bond with myself and doing that now and seeing my body and the way it's changed and being able to fully look at it and know still the same body like it's still it's still done all these amazing things it's still there for me and it's okay so I it feel doesn't hold it against you it yeah will not judge you absolutely and a lot of the time you know we can go to that place like like I mentioned before of potentially wanting to hide away and and not show that the part of us that that we're not that comfortable about whereas 
for me, like, excuse me, the just the, the, the bit between me and my body in the mirror really, really helped because there's no one else there. There's just me. Occasionally the dog joins in, but like there's just me and the mirror and there's no one judging. There's, but yourself, because yeah. I just know that for many that will be already yes. such a major step. Absolutely, like the uh, start like with looking at your face in the mirror. Yeah, you know? this is what this is what I'm saying. Like, start start how it feels good for you. If you um, if it is just with the, starting with your face or what whatever it is, then we just want to show what's possible. <clears throat> yeah, find yourself a practice. I guess it's 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 a practice of acceptance for me and it's taken like don't get me wrong it's taken me a long time to build up to that but you can find something that works for you even if it is just placing your hand on the part of your body that or, or you know what I'm saying it's a specific body part you know just for, for an example just creating connection and acknowledging it like I think accepting um Accepting it can be a big step, but acknowledging it could be the start towards getting there. Yeah, and as, in terms of <clears throat> practice, I must say that for me, cycle awareness has been the game changer in my own life. And with cycle awareness, I don't necessarily mean the menstrual cycle. I do happen to have one still. Mm -hmm. But it could just as well be being aware of the daily cycle, being aware of the monthly moon cycle. So whatever it is, but just sitting with my body every day and inquiring, so where are you at? Like, mm -hmm. how much energy do you have on a scale of one to 10? How is your mental capacity? Do you feel more dreamy, more communicative, more focused, more clear? How do you feel in terms of mood? Like what, what's going on for you? And just checking in every day is also a sense of yeah and it's okay this is how I am today and that's okay and tomorrow will be different because we are never the same not even yeah. one minute to the next and that is how I started making peace with my body because I viscerally felt these rhythms that were going on and that are going on and that I could then connect back to oh okay I used to feel like often before your menstruation we tend to a lot of us feel to tend to feel bloated ugh, maybe maybe having more critical thoughts than at other times during the cycle and then just being able to notice oh wait i'm in that phase of my cycle so these things are naturally coming up now that is okay and just because i feel bloated doesn't mean i have to reduce my food intake or uh, um, raise my <laughs> my sports uh, which is something like we tend to go to the extremes like uh -huh. something's not the way I wanted to either reduce the calories or uh, yeah. put, put on more exercise um, and I knew then or and I know now that I don't have to do any of this I literally don't have to change a single thing in how I go through my day I just have to wait for a few days uh -huh. and everything will have shifted and so instead of going into these crazy thoughts they still come up and I don't have to follow them because I know they are <laughs> not true <laughs> I have through experience learned that it's okay to simply trust my body and like like you go Okay, I feel ugh, today. Yeah. What do I need? How can I support myself? It is okay that I feel not to make it go away, yes. but simply like this is how I feel. So what would bring me joy today, for example? Yeah. Absolutely. And just being aware of that and that reduces stress, that reduces tension and that reduces literally a lot of symptoms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because less like stress aggravates any sort of symptoms you have in your body yeah. when your nervous system is activated and that again helps a breath a simple breath that creates the space and the distance to the thought so that you can gen then choose to not follow it if you don't want to or to 
choose something different. And yeah. for me, I realized this the first time when I was on a walk and I walked across a bench where there was a couple sitting there. And she was talking about, oh, I've lost five kilos in the last two months or so due to stress. And my brain was like calculating and like, oh my God, five kilos less would be horrible for my body. Mm. And I was like, wait a second, where did that thought come from? Because I was not used to thinking those kinds of thoughts, yeah. but I suddenly was thinking those kinds of thoughts versus before I would have thought, I wish I could lose five kilos, mm. which would have been majorly unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, recognizing and acknowledging these moments when something has shifted and then adding to that shift that has occurred yeah. and reinforcing that shift with ooh, congr congratulating yourself basically that you are now thinking different thoughts maybe not every time but it happened and it can happen again yeah and the that. other thing that came to me is like i remember when i was 18 maybe when i was away with friends mm, at the beach during summer holiday and i i mean i probably had what someone else would consider a very beautiful body with a nice with nice proportions and i felt and i can only say that now in retrospect so objectified like i had to display this body because that mm -hmm. was what was expected of me to put it wrap it in a nice bikini and yeah. then like look good mm -hmm. basically <laughs> look the appropriate uh, size and shape for a woman in the society yeah and i mean i was beautiful i was at a healthy weight and I didn't, like, people reflected to me that I was the quote-unquote appropriate size and shape. And I still didn't feel good <laughs> because this is always an internal thing. Because I was totally disconnected from my body. It was a thing that I had to put into a shape yes. that I had to, basically, a, a being that I had to engage it mm -hmm. couldn't be the lovely creature body that it is anymore. Not wild and free, but it had to be presented in some way, shape or form, like a certain kind of way. And that was the bit that, or I think that's the bit that is the hardest to tackle and to work through like this internal, like what are the stories you I'm telling myself yeah. about my body. And I love how you, got at it with with your um, nephew but like yeah this is my stomach and it's still doing all these amazing things like what a reaction as you say that opens so much space so much space for laughter and fun and curiosity and I was thinking like, man if, if if my mom had reacted in any sort like that or like I as you say would have far less problems yeah. in the world and yeah. we united uniting our energy all the energy that is currently going to worrying about how we look or if we are i mean the health industry can be similarly distorted mm -hmm. like what healthy is or isn't yes. and what a healthy body should look like or doesn't look like um and if we could just be in better relationship with our body yeah again that is the foundation for peace between nations is having a relationship being in relationship and relationships aren't easy no that is normal <laughs> they are a work in progress and they will always be there is never going to be a moment where it's all done and dusted Harmony. and settled yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely so let's approach it from this perspective loving your body where it's at yeah hundred percent. Can you let yourself be the way you are? Can you let your partner be the way you are? Can you let your children be the way they are? Yeah. Well, okay, there are times when you need to put up boundaries, but we're not talking about those right now. 
No, yeah. Yeah, it's... It's so important. And as you say, like, I... I genuinely believe that if we can get these messages right, the world is going to be so much better for it. Like, because it's just, like you said, like relationships, connection, acceptance, all, all of the things. And we know that when you're speaking to children, like really young children, they're not, they're not bothered <laughs> like it's I, I love it when you get the toddlers that have the big the big stomachs and mm -hmm. the, the chunky thighs and they're just not bothered like they have no awareness of it and to me it's like one of the most beautiful things in the world to just see really young children like accepting their bodies and be just living living their fullest life like exactly as as we've just said like if we can love ourselves love our bodies where they're at we're we're gonna do some amazing amazing things yeah and I've got so much more that I could say like so, so much more um yeah I feel that talking about again that the interactions that I have with my nieces and nephews, one of the things I'm really grateful to is how my sister and my brother-in-law allows me to have that relationship with them and that they are comfortable with their children seeing me um, undressed. And because this is another thing that I've discovered, there are so many situations where children are being raised and they're not seeing mm. their parents undressed or you know like without makeup or what, whatever the situation mm. is like it it amazes me that people are like oh gosh you know you you let your you let them see you undressed and I'm like well yeah that's like, the most it's mm. it's a lot easier for me at bath time and stuff like that but um yeah I think that there is so much I can't even think what the right word is like we hide our bodies a lot mm -hmm. there's a lot of a lot of hidden bodies and again that saddens me because I feel that it's it's a beautiful thing to explore especially if you've got children young children like explore your body with them mm -hmm. let them be curious let them you know learn all all that because we're we're all human you know it's mm -hmm. it's um it, it's a really natural thing in my opinion yeah. yes and also every person has their own level of what they are comfortable with in terms of being seen uh -huh. and I think it's a very fine line because I remember that like my mom loves going for camping and her family has been going to camp for camping and then in the washrooms obviously all women are, and women and men are separated and then like all the women wash like okay the showers were separate yeah. places but you could hear everything but the usual sinks and all, everything where you would just wash yourself yeah people would just see each other and while I'm on the one hand very grateful that this got me to a place being comfortable in front of other people I viscerally re remember and I think that also got me to this feeling of objectification and having to present myself at the beach it's like there was a point where I didn't feel comfortable with that And I would have preferred to have my own space and do these things in my own separate yeah. space, like at teenage age. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't allowed to. And literally my mom took the keys of our bathroom away from me okay. because it was <laughs> inappropriate <laughs> to lock your bathroom door. Yeah. And yeah. like that, that is like the other extreme. 
yes where you are forced yeah. to present yourself in ways that you are actually uncomfortable with and i understand that especially for parents that will be really tricky to catch yeah. this moment but also like, yeah if the child wants their boundaries yeah maybe that's a sign that we need to respect that and maybe it will open up again at some point later yeah but like having this personal space and this feeling of safety can help develop one's boundaries yeah I love I love that you brought that forward but I I feel like when I whenever I was in because it's not as commonplace in the UK for we're quite prudish like it's it's very uncommon for there to be like open nudity in a changing room and I know that when I was younger and I if I ever went swimming and there was a woman undressed <laughs> like looking back I probably just stared in fascination because mm -hmm. I wasn't exposed to it like it was all new yeah. to, like again there was that, that curiosity there that um and I, I was just not used to seeing nudity and then I think potentially that led to me feeling a lot of shame mm. around my body and and you know it's it's as you say you're taught yeah. to hide it so there must yeah. be something wrong if I have exactly. to hide it yeah yeah and you know just having that those messages of what's normal like yeah. I know what my body looks like but is this normal um mm -hmm. does everybody look like this does, does everybody you know like and and I think that it is it is about getting the balance and it's it's really interesting to have these conversations because everybody has different experiences around it um yeah yeah it was really interesting when I got together with my now husband and like for us to be naked in front of each other was not a problem but I noticed that their family treats things very differently to how my mom handled things my mom was very open yeah <laughs> and would just like even even now when we visit and sleep over at hers like it, it, she has like this little night thing on then she goes out with that yeah and then she changes and yeah. if there is someone present then that's their problem basically <laughs> uh and like she will not show herself naked in front of my husband for example yeah but, yeah, like, yeah she doesn't have, have a problem with just wearing very little yeah while dressing or redressing uh and in in his family it's always like things happen behind closed doors yeah, yeah. so it's also really very dependent on how you grow up yeah and how comfortable you feel with it yeah 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 but it's a lovely uh, way to, to look at, like, how are other people being in relationship or not relationship with their body? Yeah. And what ideas can I take from them to, like, be in a better relationship with my own body? Yeah, and we, we don't all do things the same way. Yeah. We, can, we can all be in relationship with our bodies in our own individual ways, and that's, that's, that's the beauty of life like just being able to have options and different different ways of doing things but and as you say through this curiosity and seeing how other people do it I can then decide what's for me and what isn't yes so it's absolutely. important that we have these conversations yeah yeah and I've really enjoyed this one um yeah I think it's yeah I think it's definitely one that is going to generate hope like the listeners are going to potentially extend the conversation with with their friends and family and and just open up those conversations because it's it needs to be spread we need to spread spread the conversation and start dear listener the, let us know yes, what has yeah. come through for you yeah and what what has been your experiences what's what's working for you how do you um you know what practices do you have if, if you're conscious of having any of, of loving your body and yeah like let us know continue the conversation with us you have the option to drop us a comment and or drop us an email 
um, we're always excited to hear from you. So we definitely welcome that. And yeah, thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us for this episode. If you haven't already, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and like and just help us reach more people that way. And if there's anybody you know who you think needs to listen to this episode or would enjoy it, then please share it. And yeah, is there anything you would like to say, Lisa, before we sign off? Just reinforcing the thank you for taking the time to ponder this important topic with us and for mm -hmm. yourself. And we hope that it is going to ripple out into your own life, into your family, your community, uh, and the wider world. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so thank you for your time today and we will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.